What's up guys? Today I told you that the plan was going to be to take the BMW to the track. Well, it turns out there's like some grudge racing going on this weekend and they have like a special testing day today and it's drag slicks only. I guess the street tires uh, kind of like ruin the prep on the track and they have to keep redoing it. So we won't be able to take the BMW. However, we were able to pull some last minute strings. And if you guys know, I had those bias plies laying around for the S13 and the R32. Um, a friend of ours actually had a set of Evo wheels for sale that happened to be the perfect spec. So we were able to go get them mounted. And we're gonna go back to the track with this thing today. I kind of spent some time ghetto setting up launch control so I can press the AC button and it enables launch control so we can get the turbo spooling and hopefully launch it now. Um, but I'm excited. I've never driven a car on proper drag slicks so I just threw them in the back and I'll mount them over at the track. But um, we're gonna head over and hopefully we'll be able to get into the low 11s, maybe 10s with this now that we have some proper tires. The way that I wired it, since I knew that the ECU had a switch already for the AC, um, I wired it so it's basically an inverted switch. So this will turn launch control off. So the theory is I'll just be able to press it real quick and then uh, that'll disable launch control. So, that's the idea. Before we go on any further with anything else, I just want to take a quick second to thank a massive sponsor of mine, Ring. If you guys aren't familiar with Ring, they're the maker of that rad video doorbell that we have. With HD video and two-way audio that we can just pull up on a phone, it's really rad. It helps make your house, your whole neighborhood safer, and it's really convenient for me when I'm getting packages delivered that constantly need signatures, all my fenders and stuff coming from Japan, and I'm in the garage, and I don't know who's at the door. So, it's a really cool product. We're actually trying to get some for our warehouse too, which would be really tight. Seems like they've been getting really popular because I know a lot of you guys and a lot of my friends have them now and it's pretty cool. You just hear like the, you hear the noise on your phone and you're like, oh, someone's there. As a subscriber, you have a special offer on a Ring starter kit. It comes with a video doorbell and their floodlight security camera, which is motion activated by the way. Uh, it comes with everything you need to start building some rad Ring security around your home. All you gotta do is go to ring.com forward slash LZ and I'd like to give them a massive thank you for sponsoring this video. Once again, it's just ring.com forward slash LZ. I think I'm gonna kill the car. Not kill it, but like turn it off so we can just have a little talk with you guys. This is what happened. We're at the track right now. The car started breaking up on the way. I think it started breaking up uh, because I think that the launch control that I was playing with, I think it fouled out the plugs. I didn't have plugs with me, I don't have tools. I was gonna try to clean them up by like unplugging the injectors and just kind of holding it. 3,000 RPM, which should work, but I got to the track. Grudge racing, I don't know what grudge racing is. Apparently it's really fast cars, and they said my car's not fast enough to run. I said I think it'll put down 10 seconds, they're like, we got four second cars running here, car's not fast enough, so. Unfortunately, we're gonna have to scrub this, and we're gonna have to try out the slicks another day. They fit sick though, I wish I could've shown you guys. It's rad. That's a bummer, but I think it's for the best. I didn't get the misfire to go away yet, and uh, I was a little bit nervous about paying. It's $250 just to get in today. And then if my car didn't work, it kind of would have sucked. Now it's working. I think I'm more fun than anything because of the fact that we like went out of the way to go and get those wheels, get the slicks mounted, so we could run today because they said that we needed to have slicks today, and then found out that apparently my car isn't fast enough. And it didn't say anything, it just said grudge racing, so I guess I should know better next time. So, probably shouldn't have tried to power shift this car. I guess I got a little addicted to it in the BMW. And I guess that's something that I shouldn't do. So, I guess it just wasn't meant to be today. Hopefully I still have first or fourth so I can get home. But I definitely blew second and third. Oh, this sucks. The misfire makes it that much worse because it's breaking up while me trying to lug it in fourth gear. That sucks. I guess the best way to look at this is, I didn't really know what the weak point in my car would be now that I have the 1,000 horsepower axles. Um, how are you gonna find the limit? Or how are you gonna push the limit if you don't find it? Or uh, something like that. How do you, how do you, how do you drive to your fullest if you don't know your limit? How do I drive, I can't possibly know how fast I can shift if I've never broken a trans. Now I know, not very fast, not very fast at all. So I kind of like tried to no lift shift it, but I also like lifted a little bit. It didn't like it. It didn't like it at all. Hopefully, my, my thing is I want to have this car working for the open house so I can like give people rides in it and like go drifting with it and stuff. I would love to do a CD in this car, but I think I'm just going to try to find a Z32 trans locally so it's just a simple swap. And then, uh, man, that's a bummer. This is why all my cars don't work at once because I drive them and then I break them and then they wind up not working. 
Second works. Third's no dice, so I'll just skip third and go to fourth. You know what, this is, this is kind of karma, because I was like, kind of bummed, because like, crap, I can't run the car with the drag strips, and now I have no video for today. And then I break my trance. So there's my video for the day. Maybe we'll just pull the trance tonight. And just get it over with. That way it's out. Although I could drive the car around as is, I feel like I want to bank on the fact that I'll be able to find another Z32 trans. She doesn't love me today. Alberto's always worried about there being enough work for him. Literally, he's almost done with everything. Yes. I just want a nice, why'd you break the car, Samir? Samir, you're breaking the car, what do you break? The trans and it's misfiring a little bit. clunking though. Oh, it will if I drive it, trust me. I don't have third, look. The shift, the, the, this. I want to open it and see what happens. I need some sort of meme or some something along the lines of the fact that my life is literally break one car, hop in another, break one car, hop in another. This car doesn't work, hop in another. It's kind of cool, but like also kind of sad at the same time that I can't keep all my cars working at the same time. The cool thing is, uh, both between Tommy and I, we know so many people uh, that we were able to already source three different options for a replacement Z32 trans, because that's what I have in that car. Um, so hopefully we'll be able to get one of those and have it fixed in the car tomorrow. I think that's a good goal. It's finally that time. If your wallet's up in the air to uh, swap the trans, which we're gonna start tomorrow, I would start to fit my underglow kit. What I'm doing right now, um, on my S13, the, the way that you usually wanna do it so you can't see the LED strips is to actually do it on the frame rails or in the pinch welds, but the adhesive, uh, usually you wanna use zip ties with it too, and I really don't wanna drill into these um, pinch welds. So, I'm just kinda taping it up in place and I'm gonna lower it down on the lift to see if you can see it, because with the side splitters and how low this car is, you may not be able to see the strip from the side. Bro, <laughs> I'm gonna check this out. That looks cool. sick. Let's see how low you can go before you start to see the strips. Oh, dude, I think we're golden there. Like, unless you're eye level with the car. What I'm gonna do, I showed you guys I taped it up in place before. I'm gonna put it on the back edge of the splitter. I'm just trying to basically leave room so I can get a nice bend here that'll probably like zip tie into the skirt. So I'll probably do it like right about here. And then I'm just gonna run it all the way down and then we'll go back and we'll go over it with some, uh, some zip ties. I'll just drill some thin holes and zip ties just to kind of go around and hold it in place. It's really nice, like, actually doing it to a nice solid surface. I'm just kind of, like, peeling the tape and just run it along as I go. I, uh, I brake clean it before, so. Honestly, we could probably get away with no zip ties, but I'm going to put them there just in case I, like, drag it in the grass or something, just so I have some sort of safety so we don't lose my sweet underglow. My sweet, sweet underglow. Since I went with their extra long strips, uh, we do have some excess here. What's cool about them, if you look, there's a little icon on here that has a picture of scissors. So this strip is actually cuttable, so we're just gonna cut it right here at the end and it'll be perfect. Normally I would zip tie these, but honestly, I don't wanna go through the extra effort because now that we have a nice clean flat surface, they're stuck so nicely there with the 3M adhesive on the back of them that I don't even see really a purpose to go over there and go and drill a bunch of holes for no reason. So we're just gonna rock it and see how it lasts. On my S13, I stuck it to a dirty frame that wasn't even a nice flat surface, so it was more necessary and there it barely even came up too, so I think we'll be good. Alberto's already picking through everything with me. So this is from a company called Diode Dynamics. It's the same underglow kit that I had on my S13. Uh, they're good friends of mine, and they sent me out everything that I need. Um, even though I only went with red strips, they sent me the full RGB wiring kit. So if I ever want to do RGB strips, I can, which is cool because I've never had like the little controller. So we can have like strobes and different colors and stuff if I ever switch to different strips. Um, but it's a really nice kit. I wound up going with a little bit longer strips for the two side skirts rather than the ones that come in the kit just because I knew that this car had really long side skirts, but um, they're sick. It says voltage, but it doesn't say anything about... It's so cool, it even comes in a nice little roll. Um, it was getting kind of late, so I tried to just power through the install, and uh, I'll just kind of walk you guys through briefly what I did and kind of some of the little tips and tricks that I implemented learning from the uh, what happened basically with the kit on my S13. The kit on my S13 burned in a fire, so that's why that stopped working, but little stuff that I noticed with it. Um, I'll walk you through the front mounting point before on my S13. I think I tried on the bumper, but it looked dumb because you could like see it when my was like in drift and stuff or if you're at eye level. So this time I went ahead and did it to the intercooler. Um, I used the adhesive on the clean prep surface and then used zip ties around it. Obviously I'm not fully done. Tomorrow I'm going to go around and clip all the zip ties and go and make sure all the wires are all tucked. Um, 
But anyway, that's where this one is. So you can't see the actual strip because that looks dumb. Have it tucked running up here. I chose the not exhaust side so I wouldn't have to worry about any wires melting. Tucked it up and then I basically just tied it in with my fuel lines and my brake lines. And then it goes all the way down, all the way down, all the way down, and then up into the trunk. I could have run it in the car, but this was just easier since I was underneath. Um, side skirt. I already showed you guys what I did with that. I added a little zip tie over here as a stress reliever so it wouldn't be like yanking down on here. And then it's tied up, goes in the same spot. Same deal with this one, it goes over the subframe. The trunk is where it gets a little interesting because there's no good surface to mount to. I can't just stick it to the gas tank. So what I did is I cut a little piece of the same stuff I make out of my splitters, stuck it to that, and then used that to zip tie it to the uh, straps that hold the gas tank in so it has a nice clean surface and it's angled the way that I want it to be. So this is a cool little trick. Um, you can't put it on the bumper because it'll look terrible because you'll definitely see the strip in the rear. But that's what I did in the back and uh, pretty simple. This one too, I just went right up in this hole here. I just gotta get a grommet for it. I haven't had a grommet there. Um, but anyway, we'll drop it down on the ground and I'll show you what's going on in the trunk. Again, relatively simple and uh, we'll go from there. One thing though that I am regretting after the fact that I'll probably go in and add, hopefully before it's too late, um, it would have been nice to do some quick disconnects, like right around this area. That way if I ever lose a skirt or need to take one off, same deal with the bumpers. Um, if I lose it, it will just unplug rather than ripping the strip off. So I'll have to go and add those in later. In the trunk, what we've got, not permanent because I need to still go get terminals, uh, but obviously positive wire on the positive, the battery, negative ground on the battery. It's just the easiest way for me to do it. And then those wires are running underneath all that carpet and then are going to come out back here where I'll have the module. Uh, it's all kind of mocked up right now, but this will all be tucked kind of behind that panel. Um, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. And this wire runs through the panel. These wires all come up through a grommet behind my Dietrich fuel filter. Uh, do I have anything noteworthy to say in the trunk? This uh, splitter that goes from one to four, um, I'm probably going to put some like stress relievers on this too just to make sure that nothing gets yanked out. It didn't come with any sort of inline fuse or relay. Alberta said it should be fine because they don't draw much for amps. Um, but however, seeing that there is a positive and a ground hooked up to the battery, I still probably want to try to add an inline fuse um, just for peace of mind. I don't know if that's pointless, but I don't know. I just feel like it should have a fuse. But anyway, we'll drop this thing down on the ground and I can show you guys what it looks like all lit up. I think I'm just going to call it a night here. Uh, well, obviously I'm going to show you guys what it looks like with the underglow, but I figured that'll kind of be like the outro clip. Um, so anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Tomorrow I got to get up bright and early and I'm probably going to be dead tired because we have all that. It's got to be installed, the cabinets, and then, then this place should start looking like a proper shop. So anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Give a thumbs up if you like the underglow and I'll see you tomorrow.